Welcome, everybody. We got Lindsay Cohon here from GNET Agency, and I'm Jordan Passman, CEO and founder of Score Score. And we're so pumped to have you, Lindsay, on the SAS Speaker Series. Thank you so much for coming out. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. This is going to be really fun. So hopefully I'm not boring. I'm going to be super fun. And you guys are going to learn a lot. Or um, obviously, if you have questions, I think Jordan, you can ask Jordan, but we're going to get through a lot of stuff here. And I'm really excited to share with you guys like, what I do. Yeah, well, let's let's yeah. start with your journey sort of into the music and video game industry. How How did you get inspired to choose this path? Okay. So very weird and random as this always goes. I think um, growing up sort of around the enter entertainment industry, I didn't ever want to be in the entertainment industry. But as things happen, you sort of kind of get thrown into this. And I started as an executive assistant. And then I think they quickly realized that I had uh, the skills to do more. And so just three months into the job, I started as an associate producer and I worked on projects like Scrubs, Grey's Anatomy, Desperate Housewives. I was doing like EPK work for companies like that. And then I moved over to a trailer house called Ignition Creative and there they do a lot of different stuff. And I was able to sort of mirror what a lot of people there did. And I really got interested in the music department there. And um, there was a very, very talented uh, woman there named Allie. And I really just started to like, kind of sit with her and just ask her a ton of questions. And she was so kind and just, that's kind of how this industry works is you find a person and they sort of kind of take you under their wing or they're willing to just explain what they do. And she did music supervision at Ignition Creative and I was just always interested. So at Ignition, I was an associate producer and I mostly worked on home entertainment there. And that was really popular, I would say like 15, 17, 15 years ago when Blu-ray is really popular. And um, then they started getting video game work and I was a really young associate producer then. And the woman I was working for was a little bit older. She was maybe in her fifties, not to age anyone, but just for, and she didn't really know what to do with video games. So she was like, let's give video games to the young girl. Like it's not going to, it's not going to be anything basically what anyone thought. And so I it's started a tiny working. little industry. Like yeah, let's just tiny little like, industry. Yeah. Let's hand it off to someone, whatever. And mm -hmm. so I started working on video games and got really into that. So I had this interest in the music. So I was kind of sitting with the music team and asking a lot of questions. I wasn't dealing with music then, but I was working on video games, associate producing and producing, and I was doing the marketing advertising for them, the trailers and everything. And then I uh, was doing that and I started to sort of get a little bit of clientele, mostly with Ubisoft and, and some companies like that. And then I, um, built up a pretty good clientele there. And then one of my clients went to the marketing advertising side. And then from there, he went to GNET and then he sort of recruited me to be a producer at GNET. And then GNET really hard recruited me and gave me an offer I couldn't refuse. And then just about like somewhere between like 13, 14 years later, I have now been at GNET. And then my role at GNET initially was producer. And then there was no music department at GNET when I went in. It was like every man for himself. We are really, we are still a small company, but we are like, uh, like 10, 12 people then. It was nothing really like such a small company. And we all were doing our own stuff. We were our own brand people, we were our own producer, we were our own music department. Like every producer had to do everything themselves. So I sort of like, sat there for a while thinking like, wow, this is not really how I remember it being at Ignition and sort of thinking I can change this. And as I, as I started going on at GNET and sort of getting higher up at GNET and my roles changing, thinking I need to restructure how this works as we started to get more and more work. And as our projects started to get bigger and bigger and our clientele started to get bigger and bigger and the requests for music started to get bigger and bigger. And with that comes more liability and, and, you know, bigger needs and you people want demos and remixes and, and like no one, if you're doing it on your own and you're just a producer, you don't really know how to handle that. So I started taking interest in that. And then I started reaching out back out to Ali, 
who was now a, who was now a freelancer and she wasn't working at Ignition anymore. And she was, she and I started working together as a freelancer and, and I started to just make just cold reach out to people in the music industry and music um, supervision industry and them just giving me tips and just making contacts. And then I one day was just like, you know what? I'm going to be head of music. <laughs> and they said, yes. And that's <laughs> how it became what it is. And for, for my position there is so I just feel really lucky that I am able to build out this department because it's become so special and we've been able to work on such really cool stuff and our clients are just along for the ride and they let us make really weird shit and it's so fun. So, so that's like, kind of typical, how that's awesome. I love that you crown yourself. You're like, you know, I think this yeah. is no for me. And they're like, yeah, that, yeah. that makes sense. I think that's kind of the beauty yeah. of working at like a, a agency that specializes in something that's not music, but music is such an important piece. Like, so what does the day to day look like at this point as the head of music at G? So basically, like day to day is I get a ton of requests, like a lot of library requests. So it's a lot of going through my hard drive and searching for specific type of requests for like a bungee project or an Activision project and doing specific polls for each project. A lot of it is um, going through a ton of emails and downloading every single piece of music that anyone sends me. Like any email that comes through, whether I respond or not, gets downloaded, gets listened to, gets categorized because at one point you may need that music and you don't know when and what weird project is going to need like a Celtic remix of, you know, Seven Nation Army or something like that. Like you just don't know, but you need it and you need to know where it is. And so like having that hard drive of music, like I have eight terabytes of hard drives on hard drives on hard drives that are categorized and like only I know where it is. So God forbid anything happens to me, but like those hard drives are like my life and that's what I work ever off of. Um, so it's a ton of polls. It's reaching out. It's just trying to keep up contacts, like having, having lunch with you and seeing what's going on with you, making, seeing what your roster is like, seeing what we can work on together. A lot of it is reaching out to my composers, seeing what they're up to. A lot of it too is there's a lot of remix requests, demos coming in, um, taking stuff that public domain and remixing that, um, following up on licensing or any contracts that are still in the works. So stuff like that is mostly my day to day or talking people off the ledge of really bad ideas, like covering a Mariah Carey track that probably can't get licensed or stuff like that. So a is lot of it is trying to keep like Oh, yeah. sorry. Is the creative it's process coming. coming from, from you? Like, are you like initially like talking to the team and being like, okay, this is what I think we should do with this. Do they have ideas? Is it super collaborative? Is the, is the client involved in that? Like, I guess walk us through a little bit of that creative selection process. Yeah. Cause it sounds like, okay, sometimes it's a remix. Sometimes it's a quick library poll. Sometimes it's a custom, but how is that decision even formulated? Yeah. So I think, I think, I don't know how it is at other companies. Cause I've just, I feel like I've spent my entire life at Gina, but I feel at Gina that it's, it's a, it's very different for every project and it's very different for every client. Sometimes the client will come in with a very specific idea that doesn't happen that often. I think, I think for us specifically for our clients, they come to us for our creative. And so yep. for us, we have a very strong creative team and a, mostly a lot of the ideas come from our creative team, whether that's, me with uh, one of my creatives, John Fleming, and we have a talk and we are like, hey, this song we think really works well. Who do we think we should cover? Who do you think we should do the remix? Or sometimes it comes from another creative director and it's the creative team coming to me with the idea and then we sort of work through it. Or sometimes the idea is just given to me and I have to see how I think it can work. Um, so a lot of the time, a lot of the time it comes from our creative team and then it's it's like given to me to try and problem solve and see how to figure it out and how to get it done. Sometimes I have an idea and I like to pitch it and I'm like, this is, I, I think this is an amazing idea. Um, like for example, um, there was like, oh, what a beautiful morning, like Oklahoma song um, or like things like that, like that you just like, there's a, there's a remix or like a special cover of that. 
that you just know is going to work. And, and I pitched it a million times and you're, and it's like, there's just one song that you just know is going to work and it sticks. And, and like that worked for like, I don't know if it was that, but there's, there's something like that, that worked last year for like an Xbox and things like that where like you, you hear this one remix that is done and you're like, this is it. And like, you put it together with that. And it's like, this song was meant for that. And so there's things like that where like, it's, it's undeniable. It's just like, boom. And everyone, that's when, that's the best energy when you, when you have one song and you just, you know, it's right. And like the client feels it. The only problem with that is try, try to get it licensed sometimes and you get a no. So that's sometimes another story. But... Everybody agrees, except you can't license it unless it's like $4 million. Exactly. Yeah. That's the only problem. What, what kind of trends, because you've been doing this a while. So what kind of trends <laughs> have you seen? Have some of them come and gone and then come back again? <laughs> and I'm curious what your predictions are of where the, the trends are actually going for the future. Um, <clears throat> well, I think like, I think we haven't seen the end of like mashups yet. I think mashups are always like really interesting and really cool. We did for Call of Duty, like two years ago, we did um, like a Lizzo and Eye of the Tiger match. Li um, was it Lizzo, Missy Elliott and Eye of the Tiger mashup, which was really cool. I think like covers and remixes are never going out. Like clients are just, they have their heart set on those. I think they just like love those to death. Um, and those are like really cool. Um, I, I do think like a creepy cover of anything is like played out, which I know wasn't one of your questions, but like, I'd love to see those kind of go away a little bit. Yeah. I think like I'm, I'm I, over I those a little bit. And you were to die off of a ledge, but I, <laughs> I, a I'm okay thing. with those like going away. But, um, I, you know, I always love, and this is like not a track. This is more in like the sound design aspect, but like, I always love, um like a trailer and like mad max does this the mad max trailer yeah. did this like fantastically like i always love a trailer that's like heavy sound design that is not that's like original score that's just like a beautifully sound designed to hit every edit point and every like something like that people don't realize how much skill and how many people are are behind something like that where like this uh, the just like the sound and like the audio mix and just everything like beautifully like syncopated and just like things like that, like are, are so amazing. And I, I think like, I'd love to see like more of that done, but things like yeah. that. Yeah. So what we're seeing a lot from the score score side is that a lot of the times, you know, clients are looking for an idea really quickly. So we'll turn around a, you know, a poll from our catalog, maybe within an hour or two, and then later on they'll want to customize it. So it kind of gets the best of both worlds of like getting yeah. everybody on the same page, liking it, but then sort of tailoring it to picture and tailoring it to the project. What percentage are you seeing of like licensing versus custom versus original versus customizing original? I'm just curious because your, your workflow is so unique in video games. Like, and I don't know if yeah. everybody realizes like sometimes you're working off of these three dimensional drawings that like need a long time to render, you know, they need to go yeah. create. For, I mean, how, tell us about that, that process as well. Um, uh, about which process, sorry. Sorry, for, the first, first tell me about how it's like divided between like custom music, licensing or original. Like, are you okay. seeing more of any of, of those or not? Um, I would say like, a, I would say we're about at 60% library music, like as is, but we do always pretty much make sure there's stems just so we can like some, we don't like change the stems, but just make sure to play around with the levels. Sometimes we need to drop, you know, the drums or drop the percussion, drop certain things just to accentuate things in the edit, make things hit a little bit harder and whatnot, just to make it feel a little bit more tailored to the edit in certain areas. A lot of our assets differ from other marketing advertising assets because a lot of our for video games a lot of our assets are over a minute they're over a minute and a half yeah. even they're usually between two and three minutes sometimes even pushing four so we need music that has the roller coaster so it's it's very hard to find a mainstream track as is that works for us hence the remix of everything um yeah we don't often ask a library to remix or to to revise something that's already 
done. It's not out of the question, um, but usually we can work with the stems or we can work with whatever's there and kind of our editors are so good. They can play with whatever's out, whatever's, yeah. you know, the elements are there. That's, so that's an interesting yeah. like note for the composers listening is that you're really taking stuff that's written for this. I mean, it's not yes. stuff that happens to work for this. This is like people intentionally writing catalog music that's ready to go for these yeah. video game trailers. Yeah, and it really does have to have, if you think about all the music that we use, think about the one track having acts, you know, like yeah. a, a beginning, you know, first, second, third, fourth act. And like, you know, it, it's kind of, you're ramping up a little bit, you're getting into the action, it's really going. And then you have this nice end with a big up and down there. And it's like, we need stop downs. We need, mo I mean, we can create stop downs always, you know, in edit, but it helps when there's something built in because there's something to kind of ramp out of naturally. And, um, you know, I feel like there's a lot of stuff that sounds, you know, people, when people are making music and I think it's really important to listen to what else is out there. It's like, take a moment to go through other libraries and listen to what's out there. And then yeah. don't do that. Do something yeah. else because there's so much out there that sounds very similar. And like, especially for us, the amount of work that we do, we exhaust a lot of libraries and it's really important for us to get a different sound. Like it can sound similar, but like take it to a different level, try something new, take that step because we are always looking for something weird or something different. Like we like that weird and different. Like we are the odd stepchildren, like, no offense to stuff to but like we we like the like weirdness and we like you know the oddity of um some of that music because that's kind of, i feel like the video games are kind of like a little sideshow that like we are allowed to make things weird and different and like that's kind of like the niche aspect of us and like that's what people like and why they like watching our trailers is because they know they're gonna always see something kind of oh and that is, you know, that's something different people are doing. I feel like sometimes video games actually set the trend for what's out there a little bit. And I I, I like to think that comes from the music sometimes. And, you know, so I would say if you're making music out there, like take take chances because I'll yeah. use it. <laughs> Do you have a favorite project or particular piece of work that stands out? Yes, I do. So I, I don't know what year because I'm really bad at dates, but um, we did this really cool. It was for the Tomb Raider, like the most recent, I think the most recent release of Tomb Raider. And it was, um, it, we did this really cool like 3D moving objects with like vintage photos of different, um, like different explorers. And then we did some other like 3D, like motion capture stuff in, in game. But the song, we had an original, I got to work with Karen O and she um, wrote us an original song called I Shall Rise. And it was like, hands down the best process. She was like, one, super freaking cool. She was like, one thing you can't do is change my lyrics. And I was like, girl, all good. But like, she just was like really cool about, she was like, I know what she, not she didn't say this but she was like literally like came in just like a pro she wrote the song first of all the lyrics are awesome so no one wanted to change it like we gave her um i think we just gave her like a one or two sheet or like mood board sort of like here's the vibe here's the tone here's some words we like think could be inspirational words but like you don't have to use them and she like sort of like took them as inspiration i think she came back in her day or two she had like laid it down it wasn't mastered yet and like it, it was with my it, Xbox, Microsoft was a client and we all listened to it. We were like, done. Like it was beautiful. She, and then they, they went and mastered it and it was just like chef's kiss. It, it, and it, it's great. You can listen to it on Spotify still, but um, it was such an easy, pro I think it spoiled me because it was like such an easy process working with like an artist and she like nailed it in the beginning and it was really awesome and just was really awesome to work with and just to, uh, beautiful soul. So that was really cool. And, and it's yeah. not always that smooth. I can tell based yeah. off of your reaction. So what's like the worst case scenario? Like how many rounds are we talking of revisions and how long did that take? Um, I wouldn't like name anyone because I don't want to. No, 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 not somebody. Like, I don't I'm just curious, like, what's um, the process like, like when it goes wrong, you know? 
the process when it goes wrong is like you just never want to offend anyone because it's like it's like maybe the person is not watching the same thing you're watching and you're like this tone is it is just completely off like when you give someone something you're like okay this is let's just say call of duty because that's the easiest one you're like okay this is for call of duty we need like a lot of energy we need this to be like really badass and swaggery and then they give you something that's like kind of just one note and slow and you're like well we can't really cut to this like this is good for like a 20 second commercial that's like about like toyota is giving puppies away like it's just like it just doesn't work and you just don't know how to turn it around, but you also don't want to offend somebody who's like a fan of the game and like has a brand partnership and like, you just don't know what to do. So you get into a pickle where, you know, it's a, it's, it's an, it's a, that in that place you sort of go, okay, clients, maybe you should yeah. take this over, but you, you just have to be, you just have to just, you know, have a delicate touch and just try to figure it out. And, you know, at that point, the clients do step in cause it's their money. And you just mm-hmm. say, hey, do you want to look at this and see what you think? But you, know, you just have to have a delicate touch when you work with people like that and just have to understand that they're an artist and this is their work. And like, it might work better for something else. And that's what ultimately you have to say is like, hey, I think this is great work because it actually could be good work for something else. But you just try, try not to offend them, basically. Well, to switch gears, like the gaming industry fans are probably some of the most dedicated fans in the world. Uh, And so every time you're putting out new content, it feels like millions of people are gonna be looking at it, scrutinizing, listening. How do you incorporate that feedback into future decision-making when it comes to, you know, music selection, creative? Like, is that something you weigh out personally or the company? Um, I think that is more to do with like on screen, then like a music, like a lot of fans, uh, first of all, like fans always are going to comment. I mean, I think that's the generation we live in, like regardless, like people always have something to say, especially when they're behind a computer. I mean, I'm sure people have something to say about what I'm saying right now too. But I think, um, I think fans have a lot to say and they rightfully do. Cause it's their, I mean, it's their money. Like we're making stuff for them to buy really. Like we want them to think what we're, creating is cool and it's exciting. So yeah, of course, like, I think, I think we, I think going into every, let's just take Call of Duty. Cause that's easy when I'm talking. I think going to every season of Call of Duty, you try to do something fresh that they haven't seen before. And I think that's always the take is like, it doesn't feel repetitive. So if we're doing hip hop or something like that, like we did like last season, we go into the season with something like a fresh where it's like a juxtaposition where it's like straight up classical or it's a storybook rhymes or that's just way out of left field or like whatever, but just try to keep people on their toes so it doesn't feel like the same thing. So it does feel fresh and every season does feel different. And I think that's the biggest thing because I don't really feel like they, because the game score is always going to be the game score, you know, but we want the marketing to always feel fresh. And so that's how we approach it is to try to change up every season. And sometimes every game is located in a different area. So maybe it's Cold War, maybe it's the 80s or maybe something else. So that sometimes can be indicative of where our marketing and where advertising kind of creative goes. So like if it's 80s, that was so fun, like doing kind of like you spin me right round or hungry like a wolf, like because you really can dive in or like zombie and things like that, because there's like a plethora when you when I'm given like a genre that's so fun is like 80s have at it. Like, let me go, you know, like things like that is really is really cool. Or like even when we were working on Fallout, Fallout has a specific specific vibe. You have that like kind of 40s, 50s, 60s, sometimes even going into the 70s ish early. Like having like where where they use like ink spots and things like that. Like that is really cool because you really can just like immerse yourself in that world, and then you find like these old vintage thing like music that you never like knew existed, and you just really like that stuff can really excite you. Just picking up on like even like some public domain stuff. You're like God, this stuff is like. You get goosebumps listening to yeah. some stuff. Very cool. For sure. Well, what would you recommend as a go-to resource for folks that are just starting out in music supervision and licensing, trying to basically learn how to get the ear that, that you have and, and understanding yeah. of it? 
I would say um, one of the best resources is contacting the Guild of Music Supervision, which I am a member of. And a lot of people, a lot of people in my industry are, and they have like a wonderful mentor program that I think is free. And people like me um, give advice and time to people starting out in the industry. And I, and you can shadow and have coffee and ask questions and email and back and forth. And I think that's a really great resource. Um, I think just finding emails, you can always, I think Google, Google music libraries, Google music, you know, go on LinkedIn and find music supervisors. Like we all started somewhere and hopefully everyone is as nice as Jordan and I, and we'll take the time to respond to you and ask questions. Like I'm always around to ask questions and help. Like if you can find me on social media, like, please hit me up. Like I'm, I'm always available. Like I'd love to help people and, and boost them up. So I think finding your people on LinkedIn, hitting up the guild, I think those are always good places um, to start. I think there's a lot of good Instagram accounts, like um, like we need music supervision or, or things like that, or just even going to the guild's Instagram and, and looking at their resources and who they follow. I think that's always um, a good place to start. And things like that. that that's awesome advice and and how yeah. about on the composer side because i'm sure you hear a lot of people reaching out all the time of oh i want to write music for this but how do i actually get anybody to hear it and and you know any yeah. perspective i have a, i have a lot of like young composers reach out to me and what i tell them is to like build up their own library so like like i said in the beginning is take go onto other sites go onto youtube because a lot of libraries post some of their stuff on on youtube and their albums go onto youtube or or wherever soundcloud or wherever people are posting their stuff and and listen and listen to what's out there and start building up your own albums and start building up your own stuff and then i and then it's very easy to to go on LinkedIn or to go in places and and find out what libraries are around and just submit, find the info email. Everyone's got an info email. Everyone reads those and start submitting your stuff and start reaching out to people. And a lot of people will take your stuff on spec and like a lot of places like me will work with you. And if you, if you want to just get in the door, like at a low cost, some places will say, Hey, will you do something for a couple thousand dollars or whatever? And boom, you're in. And and just, I would just say, start emailing and someone will respond and just yeah. find that, find that info email and someone will respond to you. And, but don't give up because so, someone will, will respond and, and you will get your, your turn. So, so just That's keep awesome. making your music. Yeah. And, and score score does have an open audition policy. So anybody can always you know, sign up and we'll check it out. And it, I think one of the hard parts is figuring out like who actually got the finish on what, like, there's not always like, um, public sort of accolades for these things. So I think really partnering with a company you trust is a big part of it. And hopefully, you know, they have a good relationship like we do with, with great collaborators. Um, so I'm gonna leave with one last question, which is if you could collaborate with any artist, living or dead for a video game trailer, who would it be in what kind of game? Ugh, okay. This, I've thought about this. Like I didn't think, okay, so first of all, I I stupidly watched Love is Blind last night for the first time and like got sucked into it, didn't sleep. But I was also up thinking about this question a lot. Okay, I have two. So one is David Bowie, obviously. I, I've I've used some of his stuff before, but um, but you know, not into the capacity that I, I wanted to. And I would love to collaborate like on anything. Yeah. <sighs> God rest soul. And also Prince. So the Prince estate is a complicated one because that we don't know who owns what and where. That is a whole mess of a situation, I think, right now. But man, would I love to use Prince. Just anything. Would, Prince, would, are... would the Prince and Bowie be like a duo in collaboration or would these be two different projects? That's, this is that's two the... different projects, but that would be like, that would be two people I'd like to sit down and have dinner with. Let me tell you. <laughs> and those are two people I'd like to watch Love is Blind with, to be honest with you. Like, I think that would be <laughs> Well, Lindsay, like, what thank is the you world so much. I, I really, really appreciate your time and, and generosity of spirit. Uh, you know, everybody on here heard, like, Lindsay's open. She's down to connect. She's down to be helpful, which is just the best. Yes. Uh, and, and we appreciate it. And it, it's just so fun to to hang and catch up. And you know, spread a little bit of 
what you do in the world. So thank you so yes, much. And, and and let me just say, if, if, if you guys, if anyone listening or you're rewatching this, um, this recording, find me on LinkedIn, um, hit me up. If you guys need any advice, any help, any resources, I'm always around. Like, I really think this industry, we need to spread positivity, positivity and help each other out. Like there's so much work to go around. Like, it's like there's, we all should be helping each other out and like, just keep up the good work, everybody. I agree. So thank you so much. Have a beautiful day yes. and we'll talk soon. All, all right. right. Bye guys.